The killer whale, or orca, is one of the ocean's most powerful predators. Known for their intelligence, teamwork, and strength, these apex hunters take on a wide range of prey, from seals and sharks to the largest creatures in the sea, including blue whales. However, there's one small fish that even this apex predator approaches with caution. This fish not only uses a clever feeding strategy to catch its prey, but it also leaves an unusual bite on the killer whale itself, adding an extra layer of mystery to its defense. It proves that size isn't always the deciding factor in the ocean's complex food web. This tiny creature cleverly exploits its position in the food chain to prey on even the largest animals in the ocean. But how can something so small pose a threat to nearly every creature in the sea? And how does its role in the food chain boost its predatory abilities? Let's dive into this fascinating ocean drama. But before we do, take a quick peek into this intriguing story that ties it all together. In 1991, Richard Dashnow, an electrical engineer, made a shocking discovery while inspecting deep-sea communication cables used for global data transmission. He found the thick, reinforced cables designed to endure the pressure of the deep ocean had been punctured and damaged deep underwater. But what truly surprised him was how they were destroyed. The cables had been chewed through in a consistent, circular pattern, with bite marks of nearly identical size and shape. At first glance, Dash now suspected the marks could have been caused by mechanical failure or environmental wear. But the precision of the bites quickly ruled out those possibilities. Each mark appeared almost as if someone, or something, had deliberately bitten into the cables with razor-sharp precision. Intrigued, Dash now set out to discover what could be causing such damage at such extreme depths. Similar incidents were reported in the 1970s and 1980s when U.S. Navy submarines operating in deep waters returned to base with unusual damage to their outer hulls. At the height of Cold War tensions, there were immediate concerns that this might be the result of Soviet sabotage. There was a theory that the circular marks were the result of underwater espionage, perhaps an attempt to incapacitate key military assets in secret, but despite extensive investigations, no evidence of human interference was found. So as more samples of the damaged cables were collected, marine biologists eventually identified the culprit, the cookie-cutter shark. This small but notorious shark earned its name from the way it bites, taking cookie-shaped chunks of flesh from its prey. It's capable of attacking both marine animals and even human-made objects in the ocean. Dashnow's investigation confirmed that the cookie-cutter sharks were responsible for the precise, circular damage to the deep-sea cables. So how dangerous can a shark that's barely over a foot long really be? Well, surprisingly, the cookie-cutter shark's sharp teeth and parasitic nature make it one of the few creatures capable of targeting giant predators like killer whales, great whites, and even blue whales. As mentioned earlier, cookie-cutter sharks are one of the few species capable of targeting animals considered untouchable in the ocean. Even the notorious killer whale, known for hunting down giant sharks like the great white, falls prey to the tiny cookie-cutter shark. This is because cookie-cutter sharks use a parasitic feeding strategy, allowing them to feed on much larger and stronger animals without being killed in return. With their remarkable technique, cookie-cutter sharks take small, circular bites of flesh from massive ocean creatures, including killer whales, blue whales, and great white sharks, proving that size and power don't always guarantee safety in the ocean. Using its sharp teeth, the cookie-cutter shark latches onto its prey and carves out circular chunks of flesh. This unusual approach allows the small shark to challenge some of the ocean's largest predators, proving that even the tiniest creatures can hold significant power in the deep sea. 
In fact, unlike larger predators, the cookie cutter shark doesn't engage in dramatic high-speed hunts. Instead, it occupies a unique niche in the food chain, feeding on giant creatures without relying on brute force. And you might be curious about the origin of the name, Cookie Cutter Shark, and what makes this small predator so effective at targeting some of the ocean's largest creatures. The name Cookie Cutter Shark may sound harmless or playful, but it reflects the shark's unusual feeding behavior. This species is also known as the Cigar Shark due to its long, cylindrical body. Unlike many other sharks that kill their prey, the cookie cutter shark uses its suctioning lips and rows of razor sharp teeth to carve out perfect chunks of flesh from larger animals. The bites they leave behind are typically cookie shaped, which is the origin of their name. Once the cookie cutter shark attaches to its prey, it uses its strong jaws and sharp lower teeth to twist its body, creating a circular wound. This technique allows the shark to extract substantial chunks of flesh without killing the animal. Its targets often include whales, dolphins, and even other sharks. By removing small portions of flesh while keeping the prey alive, the shark avoids confrontation and preserves the possibility of feeding again in the future. This feeding strategy enables the cookie cutter shark to consume its meals without expending the energy typically required to chase, subdue, or kill, distinguishing it from more traditional predator-prey relationships. Given their feeding habits, names like demon shark or parasitic beast might be more fitting. Their ability to prey on some of the largest and most powerful creatures in the ocean, while remaining relatively unknown, speaks volumes about their elusive nature. Despite their unique feeding strategy, capturing footage of cookie cutter sharks is surprisingly difficult. There are very few recordings of their attacks. Cookie cutter sharks have intriguing feeding behavior, but they are relatively difficult to find in the depths of the ocean. Actual video recordings of their attacks are scarce, with much of what we see in documentaries or online being computer-generated imagery designed to replicate real-life behaviors observed by marine biologists. One reason for their rarity is their habitat as cookie cutter sharks typically dwell at depth of around 1,000 to 3,000 feet. This extreme environment presents challenges for researchers attempting to observe them in their natural habitat, where they must contend with high pressure, darkness, and cold temperatures. As a result, capturing live footage of their activities remains a major challenge. The absence of video evidence has hindered scientists' ability to fully understand cookie-cutter shark hunting techniques and social behavior. However, recent advancements in technology have led to the development of deep-sea cameras, which could soon provide greater insight into these elusive animals. Another factor contributing to their difficulty in being observed is that cookie-cutter sharks are nocturnal, meaning they're most active at night. They rise to shallower depths at night to feed, and once they've eaten, they return to the safety of the deep sea during the day. This behavior makes it even more challenging for researchers to capture footage of them in action. But what's even more fascinating about these sharks is how they bring new life into the world, a process as unique as their feeding habits. They reproduce through a method called ovoviviparity. Ovoviviparity refers to the unique way sharks give birth. While many fish lay eggs and mammals give birth to live young, Ovoviviparous species combine both methods. In the case of the cookie cutter shark, the female produces eggs but keeps them inside her body instead of laying them in the water. The eggs hatch internally, allowing the young to develop within her until she gives birth to fully formed mini versions of herself. This reproductive strategy increases the young shark's chances of survival as the embryos are protected from external predators and the harsh conditions of the deep sea. Once born, the young cookie-cutter sharks are independent and ready to fend for themselves. Interestingly, this form of reproduction is not unique to cookie-cutter sharks. Other shark species also undergo the same reproductive process. Great white shark, tiger shark, and whale shark are a few ovoviviparous shark species. From biting chunks out of the largest animals to leaving their mark on deep sea cables, the cookie-cutter sharks have carved out a unique place at the top of the food chain. 
So the next time you think of ocean predators, remember that it is not just the biggest and fiercest that make waves. Sometimes the smallest in the oceans can leave the most significant mark.